This is Damon Fordham, author, historian, and adjunct professor of history at Charleston Southern University and the Citadel in Charleston, South Carolina. About 140 years ago, in many African-American homes in the United States, this picture proudly stood on the wall on people's walls. It mentioned that these were the first quote unquote colored senator and representatives in the United States. And the gentleman on the, uh, uh, this gentleman right here that you see over here, over here on the far right of where my hand is, is the subject of what we're going to talk about today. There's a larger picture of him. This was Hiram Revels. Hiram, very recently in Mississippi, a man named Mike Espy lost the election to become the a senator from Mississippi. But Mississippi had this man as its senator back in the early 1870s, Hiram R. Revels. And here's his story. Hiram R. Revels was born in Fayetteville, North Carolina, 1827. A free man, as a matter of fact. And while he was there, he attended some of the underground free schools for African Americans that they had there in those days. See, a lot of people don't know that you had that the African Americans of the South were not entirely illiterate and ignorant as many have been led to believe. There were a lot of secret underground schools in those days, and he attended them. During the Civil War, he served as a Union Army chaplain and was later called by the Methodist Church to preach at a church in Natchez, Mississippi. And because of his literacy and his articulation, he went on to really represent a lot of the African Americans down there. And so in 1870, he was elected to the Senate in Mississippi during Reconstruction. The United States Senate, not the State Senate, mind you. Now on February the 8th, 1871, he gave a very powerful speech to the Senate regarding segregation and race relations. And part of it goes as follows. I find that the prejudice of this country to my color is very great. And I sometimes fear that it is on the increase. For example, let me remark that it matters not how colored people act. It matters not how they behave themselves, how well they deport themselves, how intelligent they may be, how refined they may be. For there are some colored persons who are persons of refinement. This must be admitted. The prejudice against them is equally great as it is against the most low and degraded man you can find in the streets of this city in any other place. This, Mr. President, I do seriously regret. And is this prejudice right? Have the colored people done anything to justify the prejudice against them that does exist in the hearts of so many white persons and generally of one great political party in this country? Have they done anything to justify it? No, sir. Can any reason be given why this prejudice should be fostered in so many hearts against them simply because they are not white? I make all these remarks in all kindness and from no bitterness of feeling at all. And he went on to conclude, Sir, during the canvass in the state of Mississippi, I traveled into different parts of the state, and this is the doctrine that I everywhere uttered, that while I was favor in building up the colored race, I was not in favor of tearing down the white race. Sir, the white race need not be harmed in order to build up the colored race. The colored race can be built up and assisted and as I before remarked, in acquiring property and in becoming intelligent, valuable, useful citizens without one hair of the head of any white man harmed. Now keep in mind, this is a man speaking in 1871, when many doubted the capacity of African Americans to read or write or speak or think intelligently. And this was a man of far lesser advantages than many people have today. But in either case, though, the Reconstruction Era, for those of you who don't know about this great period of African-American uh, statesmen, <clears throat> during the end of the Civil War, you had the 13th Amendment in 1865 that ended slavery in areas that were not covered by Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation. There was the 14th Amendment in 1868 that made African-American citizens, as well as anyone born on these United States, note, anyone born on these United States, and that's true today. Think about it. It made them citizens. And in 1870, the 15th Amendment 
gave black men and every, any other man born in these United States above the age of 21 the right to vote. Women got the right to vote in 1870. I mean, excuse me, in 1920. So with all of this, you had this period where black men served in state legislatures, and in one case in Louisiana, Pinckney Benton Stewart Pinchback became governor. And you've probably seen the other video that I've done on Alonzo Jacob Ranzier, who was an African-American lieutenant governor of South Carolina. But in either case, though, in 1877, they, after the election of 1876, they passed the Tilden Hayes Compromise that ended the Reconstruction days in the, site at, in the South, and then this eventually turned power over back to the former Confederates, which eventually led to the segregation laws and the denial of black people the right to vote, so they had to kind of start all over again in the 50s and 60s. But back to Hiram Revels. After, one year in the, after a year in the Senate, he served as the president of Alcorn State University in Mississippi, an early historical black college. And he taught theology in Rust College in Holly Springs, Mississippi. And he attended a church conference in 1901 where he suddenly died in church. He's one of many forgotten heroes. And if you want to learn more about him, his story and that of many of these great men are told in Philip Dre's book, Capital Men. And in fact, there's Philip Dre back there. He's written a number of really great books on this subject. And this is kind of important because we're living in a time where many of the young people do not have a lot of suitable and decent role models. It's many times in their own homes and in their communities, and much less the entertainment and political world today. So it's really important that young people in particular, as well as older people who, meet, who may try to understand that their situation is not as hopeless as many seem to think, they need to learn about people like Hiram Revels and many others like him. Because if they don't, men this wise, might, men and women this wise, should I say, may be no more. This is Damon Fordham.